Hi, today we're going to be working on se uh, lesson three, session four. This is the uh, final lesson, or excuse me, the final session in all of our volume um, sections. So it's kind of exciting that we've made it this far. Um, and so today you're just going to take absolutely everything you've learned over the past couple of weeks and show um, us what you have learned. And so you're going to be using everything you know about volume to solve the problems on pages 49 through 52 in your Ready Math Workbook. So go ahead and take out your Ready Math Workbook right now and turn to page 49. And I'm going to go through and help you out on each of the questions so that you know what it is that you're supposed to do on each of the questions. So we're going to start with number um, one on page 49. Um, I, um, on each of these questions, you may want to pause it and write the notes into your workbook so that it's a little bit easier for you to do. I tried to um, give you a little bit of help to make the problems a little bit easier um, for you to digest. So let's look at um, problem number one. It says, the diagram shows the dimensions of a cement walkway where all the sides meet at right angles. What is the total volume of cement needed to make the walkway? Show your work. So I went ahead and broke your the two parts into I broke the rectangular rectangular prism into two parts. And then I showed you the three um, sides that you would need for figure one and the three sides that you would need for figure two. You're going to find the volume of each figure and then you're going to add volume one to volume two and that's going to be your final volume. Don't forget to label your units. We're talking about cubic because it's volume, cubic feet. For number two. Number two is something that we haven't seen yet but I have total faith that you can do it. So it says the rectangular prism shown below has a volume of 42 cubic meters. That means they're telling us how much this rectangular prism holds. That's not what we're trying to find out right now. We're trying to find out what is the length of the prism. So we know our width, we know our height, but we don't know our length. So we know that volume equals length times width times height. So we know that 42 is the volume. We don't know the length. They used a little curly L, so it didn't look like a one. And then we know the width is two and the height is three. So I bet if you were to multiply these two out, you would know that um, this number times something equals 42. So you probably will know what L is once you um, do your multiplication. And then you're just going to say the length equals that many meters. If you don't remember, you might want to pull out your multiplication chart. For number three, we're looking at a cube. A cube is a rectangular prism whose side lengths are all the same. So every single side of this um, rectangular prism has a length of two feet. So what is the volume of the cube with a side length of two feet? So what is the volume of this cube? Now Danny chose B as his correct answer. How did he get that answer? I'm going to tell you something. Danny is not correct. So I want you to find the right answer first, and then I want you to tell me what Danny did wrong to get the wrong answer. Sometimes the people in this part of the problem are correct, but in this case today, he's not. For number three, we're looking at a rectangular prism that has a square base with side lengths of five centimeters and a height of seven centimeters. What is the volume of this prism? Now, when we're talking about a rectangular prism that has a square base, that means that all the sides on the base, there's four sides, they're all equal because it's a square. And we know that all squares have four equal sides. So you need to figure out the volume, but we know that since it's a square base, that these two sides are going to be the same. So five times five is the base, and then that number times seven is going to give you the volume. For number five, this diagram can be cut apart in two different ways. You can cut it across here or you can cut it up and down here. You're going to need to break it apart in two different ways to find the correct answers. Two of these answers are correct. So um, you probably are going to want to do this one in pencil so that you can do lots of erasing. 
Um, but I know that you will be able to, to do it. Let me go ahead and help you out and give you a couple of side lengths. Oop, it's inches, not feet. So that right there is inches. Up here, this is five inches. Um, and then this height right here is three inches. All right. With that information, um, you should be able to solve um, that problem. Let me just circle this so that it's, there we go. Okay. Now for number six, don't worry about this grid. You can just cross that out. We're not going to use it. This diagram shows the dimension of two identical rectangular prisms joined together. So what they're telling you is that this shape and this shape are 100% equal. So you just need to figure out what is the volume of one of these shapes. And they've only given you three numbers. So that's a pretty good uh, point to show that, that they, they just want you to multiply those three numbers. But then you're not done. Once you get that volume, that's only the volume of one of these shapes. And there's two shapes. So you need to make sure that you multiply your volume times two to get the, the total volume of all of those shapes. Go ahead and turn to page 52. On number seven, there is a cardboard box that has a volume of 60 cubic feet. Give three different sets of measurements that could be the dimensions of the box. So you need to figure out three ways that you could multiply out to get a volume of 60. So I'll give you one to help you out. If you had a a box, uh, a cardboard box that was um, two feet by three feet. Two times three is six. So then, let's get that focus before I move on. All right, there we go. So two feet times three feet is going to give us six feet, and then six feet times ten feet gives us a volume of sixty. So what are two other ways that you could multi multiply three numbers to get 60? On number eight, Ra uh, Ramey designed a small pond for a restaurant. The diagram below shows the measurement of the pond. How many cubic feet of water are needed to fill the pond? Show your work. So you've got shape one. I broke it apart for you, and you have the numbers you need. Shape two, you have the numbers you need. Go ahead and find the volume of each shape, add them together, and tell me the total cubic feet. And then finally, in the math journal, you need to describe a real-world object that can be modeled by a rectangular prism and give its dimensions. So maybe like a book or a, a box of cereal or anything that is a rectangular prism shape. And then you need to um, use a formula to find the volume of the object. So you're going to draw a sample of the object. You're going to label the length, the width, and the height. And then you're going to find the volume. And with that, have fun with that. Um, take some time and enjoy yourself. And then when you're done with this, um, you uh, can uh, move on to your independent practice. Have fun.